Hey guys, welcome back to a new episode of Calculated Chaos. Today I'm here with two lads from Pure Clothing. How are you keeping, lads? Not too bad. Yeah, you're good. So, do you want to give a quick introduction to who you are? So, my name is Peter Timlin. Um, I live in Ballinan, County Mayo. Um, I'm 19 years old and I'm studying marketing, innovation, and technology in DCU. Uh, I'm Richard, Richard Grimes. I'm from Innescrone in County Sligo. Uh, I'm 20 years old and I just finished first year in UL studying aeronautical engineering. Okay. So, lads, obviously, as you can see from, as you can all see from the clothing behind you, um, you've launched your clothing brand during COVID. So, you want to give a small kind of brief run on that and what you do and why you set it up? Um, yeah, so I suppose it's something we thought about since our leaving search year. Yeah. Uh, the whole way through, we were sort of thinking of doing sustainable clothing, but um, with our work with Atigo Marketing, was a sort of a digital marketing gig that we had, and we were sort of putting it on the back burner. But then when COVID came along, um, we just decided that it was the right time to sort of take the plunge and go for it. Um, so we sort of seen with brands like on Instagram, when that started off with the likes of Jim King and 11 Degrees, that that social platform is what made them brands really. So we decided with TikTok, we set up our TikTok profile and we decided there's going to be a new generation of brands coming out of that. So we sort of wanted to hop onto that um, as early as we could. So we sort of went for the tracking our progress the whole way through the ent entrepreneurial process and that's sort of mm. what we went for, yeah. And um, so you mentioned your digital marketing agency and obviously a lot of young people, including myself, get into that sort of space. What kind of made you lean into that? Because obviously the, the perks are typically low cost to get in, all that crack, because we're digital native, so we actually have a lot, kind of a better palette for digital content. So what kind of made you go that direction over the clothing maybe to start with? Um, well, in the beginning, I suppose, when we were in TY in 2017, we did F1 at school, so we got to go to the Royal Finals of kind of an engineering business competition in Malaysia. And along the journey, we picked up a few skills with, you know, making portfolios in the Adobe suite, so using Illustrator and InDesign and design and stuff, um, as well as content production for our team. So we kind of, once we came home from the Royal Finals and the journey of F1 in schools was over, we kind of uh, came together and decided we'd carry on in, in some way, um, in some way that we could. Um, and yeah, Tigo formed. So we did websites, uh, promo videos and logos and stuff for businesses around Balna. Now it didn't go huge, but um, it was a good experience, um, you know, getting to know people and at least develop skills in, in certain areas that we have now carried on again um, into pure clothing. So. Yeah, 100% doesn't, I even though know for myself, like <coughs> the actual, the skill sets you actually learn through that and even just running your own business and dealing with business people it, I think it's invaluable and obviously that helped you lean in to what you're doing now but also I found personally was seeing the back end of businesses and actually being able to see okay who's doing well who's not doing well who's profitable who's not profitable because obviously yeah. when you develop websites dirty secret is we can see your sales you're yeah, in the yeah, yeah. <laughs> we see your sales so we know what sort of numbers you're doing so it is super interesting and then when did you kind of decide okay Tigo maybe not going to work out or maybe we're going to leave, put on the back burner and then move into pure was it because of COVID because obviously I know we slowed down a bit at the start of COVID but then kind of picked up so yeah. was it kind of we already kind of winded it down before COVID or was it COVID that kind of kick started that but like with the online marketing thing especially locally it was sort of the whole payment thing was sort of hard to of to structure it with people we knew local businesses because that was always our ethos is because everything seems to be moving towards Dublin we always wanted to try and sort of help local businesses who can't afford to maybe hire someone full time to do their marketing for them. Mm -hmm. So, sort of, yeah, it was not as lucrative maybe as it should have been really, but we were sort of almost too nice in trying to sort of support local. Mm -hmm. um, so we just decided, we always said that we wanted to use our skills to try and sort of do something that would benefit us more and sort of benefit a business for us rather than benefiting other companies okay so we sort of the whole sustainable thing sort of came through um my dad used to own actually a drapery on pier street hmm. so he sold school uniforms and that sort of thing with iron sweaters they're all organic cotton and they're he always went for premium quality but he ended up getting undercut by different sort of fast fashion brands hmm. sort of 
mass producing uniforms. Um, so he went out of business in 2017. So then, um, he's been a great help as well. And I suppose it's been a huge effort family wise. Like Richard's mum being folding for us because we have a lot of garments to get through. <laughs> um, his brother did photography for us and stuff like that. And it all makes a huge difference when you're just starting off because you need to just be as lean as you can and trying to cut back your costs at the start because if we sort of had to pay everyone for the hours that's gone in, I mean, we're not getting off the ground at all. Like, you're you're done for before you even get started. So, yeah, that sort of... We decided to move away into something that we thought would be more monetizable for us mm. rather than... Yeah. No, that makes sense. And obviously... And obviously as you know a lot of people go and try and, like our age the younger people try and get into fashion and a lot of them kind of maybe build up loads of hype they kind of maybe have one launch and then you never hear from them again or even they don't even go get up off the ground they don't even get an audience to start with obviously you went for the messaging of the sustainable clothing brand why sustainable over anything else and then w was there any other options when you were coming, coming in and looking at this with the guards clothing and stuff um yeah i mean we needed an angle um, mm -hmm. in order to get in. As you said, so many people have tried it mm -hmm. um, and some have gone well, but there was no one out there. there. Like we found ourselves, say when we were buying clothes online, there was never really a, a sustainable alternative to the fast fashion brands where, you know, the, the garments are damaging the project, uh, the planet with the, the chemicals they use, the amount of wastage, plastic in packaging. And um, something that was really important to us was the uh, treatment of workers. So, mm -hmm. um, even see what came out there in Leicester two weeks ago where mm. there was um, the English people getting paid £3 a day or £3 a week even um, it's it's scandalous so we kind of wanted to give people an ethical alternative um, to these fast fashion brands and try to make our difference I suppose yeah no and absolutely and then obviously you knew that obviously the algorithm on TikTok means that you can get a lot of scope obviously some of your videos like we saw one earlier is up on 600k uh, what when did you decide okay when we're going to double down on tiktok maybe we're going to have our instagram presence but we're going to double down on tiktok and really go for that when did you kind of make that decision and was that was that maybe did you take tiktok seriously because i know conversion rate typically on tiktok have actually been quite low yeah a lot of the big influencers aren't actually making any numbers they're not no. doing sales for businesses so that's why i thought you were actually a really interesting example of that the yeah. fact that you're obviously selling units so yeah when did you decide to go that direction um I should actually show you the first TikTok we made. Um, it was interesting. I shot it on the iPhone, like, yeah. I showed it to Richard. I was like, oh. Thank God it was posted. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's very, uh, very poor. But, I mean, the algorithm is you can go viral with one video. Yeah. And, you know, I don't, we'd seen brands actually blow up on it from America. We hadn't seen any sort of European brands do it. Mm -hmm. um, and you can see the results on their TikToks. Like, if you're... There's no such thing as bad reach. Like if you're reaching people with the with right sort of credible content, mm -hmm. it's going to convert in some some form. Like, I mean, with the whole TikTok, TikTok is sort of finicky. Like you won't know where where its future is. So obviously, it converting to Instagram and sort of different social platforms is sort of a priority. Mm -hmm. But um, in terms of reach, TikTok is just where it's at for for business. Mm -hmm. If you if you can if you can nail it, like you need to find a niche on it because, I mean. You could, could get lucky with one video, but you need to get a bit of longevity in it as well. So there's no point blowing up for one video and then you that'll die off in a month or two. You need to sort of have the sort of... People want to see progress on your TikTok. Mm -hmm. So that's why people will follow you. Mm -hmm. So that's what we went for. That's sort of the end. Yeah. I mean, yeah, like the thing is, obviously Instagram is more valuable. The engagement is more sort of authentic. Mm -hmm. Whereas on TikTok, it's sort of anonymous profiles and stuff you don't you don't know what's there really but you're just not going to reach 600,000 people on Instagram no, with no. a post it's just not going to happen unless you're your Nikes or Adidas as well you like you're not going to do it mm. so um, yeah we sort of took a leaf out of books the book of people in America who sort of did it with their brand and we said we could apply that to ourselves and just see where it goes so, yeah. yeah and obviously it's gone very well so far and um then obviously so you went to TikTok route and obviously like 600,000 views on a video and like people started talking about you because you were uh, like like you said not many European brands that you gone the way you did especially startups I hadn't yeah. actually seen any other any other kind of companies like yourselves and then when did you 
what how long before your actual pre-sale launch did you actually start posting and then how frequently to, how long was it until you actually started seeing some traction or people you started seeing the views going up then yeah our first video sort of got 126 thousand views yeah. so that was a big that was a good start yeah um and that that put the sort of flip the the hourglass like we had to start going then like we had to chase it because it would have been a very easy if we if we left it too long without any products even available you're you're gone like you're not mm. you're forgotten about so i suppose that was the validation we needed so i suppose between then it took us four weeks to sort of launch our first pre-sale um and in between then we sort of to keep our costs down we had to do everything ourselves like everything we did was content website uh, promotion even um, then with the embroidery process that locally so we we played we sort of worked on that ourselves as well and design of the garments and stuff so the first TikTok sort of set the ball rolling um, so it took us four weeks to get it up uh, our first pre-sale was the tw- 12th of May I think or was 22nd, it? 22nd, 22nd, yeah. 22nd 22nd of May um, so that went on for a week um, and then we had a bulk o- of orders to prepare um, so that took we sort of started learning the process and there there with like so much so many balls to keep in the air yeah. to juggle like you have to we have to delabel iron steam um, pack every single product that comes yeah. through ship it label it ship it and we have to fulfill every order with send out a confirmation email for that so much goes into it so getting automation into it is so important but yeah. um, time wise like so much, so many hours. Like you just sometimes you just hit exhaustion, you hit a wall where you can't even keep your eyes open because you're working so hard on it. Because stuff needs to be done so quickly to just get you that start that you need. Because I mean, things may ease back in a year or two, but I mean to actually build something that's long term, um, profitable. It, you just have to put in the hours now to try and penetrate that market, try and get your brand out there. But yeah, yeah, hundred percent, and obviously long hours are needed like you said you can't afford to just pay a videographer to go do that you can't pay a photographer to come in or exactly. someone to build your website outs- outsource a website obviously you know how to build a website yeah. but to pay someone let's say else to do it so you can focus on that you have to do everything as a start up you can't yeah you just can't take a day off because you're feeling tired like if someone puts an order in and they want their product delivered you have to deliver that product as soon as you can as you can and especially nowadays when delivery Everything want everything is wanted now. Like mm. no one has patience. So, um, you need to if you get an order at five o'clock in the morning, you need to be up, packing it and make sure it's going out the next day because, um, you just won't get anywhere otherwise. That's if you want to be a big brand, you have to be like the big brands. You can't afford to, oh, we're only startups, so we're, we're not, people don't understand why we're delivering slower. That's not the that's not the angle that you can take. You need to be look at what they're doing and say well if they're doing it why can't we do it mm. and we need we need to do it because it's the only thing that'll sort of get us off the ground so that's and obviously to start with how do you find set up your supply chain and stuff because obviously like trying to source good quality garments that are actually sustainable is not an easy thing like it's not like you go to a website and it's like all sustainable clothing companies you know yeah. what way did you even start going about that because obviously that's the core of your business and obviously like you said keeping the rest of it in the air is tough enough but actually even just finding a reliable supplier I'd imagine was even tough at the start like how did you even go about doing that uh, so I mean initially it was a lot of Google searches mm. um, a lot of research kind of had to go into it to find one that was certified as being fair trade certified as using organic cotton and, and all of this sort of stuff so um, once we found one we got set up with an agent um, we dealt through them uh, and got the garments in and once they did come in um, we used a, a local factory about 40 minutes from here uh, to do all the embroidery for us uh, that factory is wind powered as well so they're as eco-friendly as they can be and then we get our labels um, we recycle 100% recycled polyester labels we get them sewn on in Balna in this town um, up in the, the costume company so um, yeah supply chain can be difficult but we're lucky that we do have um, you know really good people relatively close by um, that can help, can help us out um, yeah. yeah like the thing is with the labelling we put la- we label every product with a top label and a bottom label and I suppose before we before we knew how we were going to do that I had a notion in my head that my sister and my mum would to do it overnight and so on these labels and like 
can you imagine someone on a thousand labels onto a garment like no. your fingers <laughs> your fingers would be gone like but we sort of learned as we went on that what was viable and what wasn't and I mean that was the people that are labelling our products are brilliant like because mm. we would have been so stuck without them because we had this notion that we'd be able to do it ourselves and it just wouldn't have worked because mm. there is some skills we try and sort of do as much as we can ourselves but there's some skills that we'll never quite master and I don't think someone in embroidery is well we'll be working on it but it's not something we were fit to do ourselves then mm. so I mean our supply chain sort of grew as we went along in a lot of ways we didn't have everything set four weeks before we launched mm. so sort of things fell into place along the way but um, thank god they did yeah we got a stroke of luck along the way <laughs> in some places well ab- absolutely I'm actually only after finishing the the shoe dog it's the Nike founder's autobiography and like yeah. the amount of luck even from my own experience talking to people and reading books and even like you just said yourselves there is a little bit of luck needed to actually end up pulling everything off no matter what you're going around. Um, like it, it's actually it's crazy and then obviously the big one is where did the name come from or who came up with the name because I know there's going to be a point of contention a lot of business partners are where the name came any, from any good idea in this business really has been the mastermind <laughs> that is me like, to be honest um, I don't know I think we literally just picking a name is people always ask us how do you pick a name what, what how should I pick a name for my business but like it's it's not something you can teach you just need to google acronyms synonyms of obviously the main message of our brand is the sustainable aspect that everything we do is sustainable and it's sort of eco-friendly so we had a few we sort of wanted time with the nature and we sort of started spitballing there um so we had a few ideas like aurora um stuff like that but purity sort of became the the one we were sort of looking at as there's a nice ring to it it was clean even the lettering on it is clean so, but then we thought it was a bit with the two, co- two um, consonants. Syllables. What is it? What? <laughs> syllables, two syllables. Yeah. That was a bit, a bit lengthy. So we cut it down to pure, um, four letters, even. It's nice, clean to look at. So that's mm. what we went for. Yeah. Even like symmetrical on the t- on the on the piece of garment in front of you, like it actually does. It's so if when we bring out our line of sliders, like you'll have the P U R E. Lovely. Thinking ahead, <laughs> thinking ahead, um, and. What was maybe obviously you started four weeks out and then you did a pre sale on twenty second of May. What was the biggest surprise for yourselves on order day when people started making orders? Like, like did you was there like, that moment? Because I know I've been around a lot of brands that are launched and they're like, "Will anyone even buy this? Like, yeah. like have we just been getting loads of eyeballs and no one's actually going to buy this?" Or did you think quite? Did you quite confidence? Or what way were you kind of feeling kind of on launch day? We really had, I mean, we really had no idea. Like, mm-hmm. we we knew that we had a, I think when we launched. On May 22nd, we had about 15,000 followers on TikTok. Mm. So we knew we had some people there supporting us. But, I mean, we, in the grand scheme of things, we had no idea on how it was going to go. Like, as you said yourself, so many big creators don't convert for businesses. And, exactly. and that was in the back of our mind as well. Like, will it actually convert? So, I mean, we were prepared for <laughs> to get 10 orders. And, you know, we were quietly hoping that we'd get quite a bit more than that. And thankfully, it did go well. But, I mean, the moment of realisation that, like, oh shit we do need to get someone professional to sew on our labels for us we're not going to manage it ourselves kind of hit about an hour before the this site went live um and we we're watching the numbers of people waiting um it was yeah it was interesting um i mean our first purchase was within a minute and that was over in the uk which was wow. something um validated I mean, yeah. yeah you wouldn't really expect that someone who you've no idea who they are will be your first order yeah, um, no. especially as a startup um, kind of we expected a few kind of p- not pity sales but like you know people who we knew who we knew just kind of support helping you out yeah, yeah. yeah. which you need and at the start as well for but, sure yeah, for sure for really need them but um, you can't you can't base a business on that you can't say oh I got sales from this person down the road this person down the road now every every little bit of support helps but you can't it's not good data to, to base like oh, is this business actually viable because mm. you might have that the first time you're not going to be able to continue on yeah. um, with that all the time yeah. yeah. so then obviously you had your first drop and that went very well for the second drop what changes did you kind of make or what did you learn from the first one you're like okay we need to have this and this tightened up for the second one um, well for the very first drop we as I was saying we really had no idea of how it was going to go mm-hmm. so we yeah, we just offered products that we thought people would would like, um, 
and from that we kind of learned what colors went well what designs went well and what sizes went well mm. so um i mean we still didn't have the money um to buy everything up front the first time around um and as well we didn't want to have any wastage so we only ordered in what people ordered from us so that was it was helpful um then for the second drop we needed to get our delivery time slightly faster um so from what we had learned the first time around on colors sizes designs um we were able to buy in a little bit of stock um about a week prior to launching um the second pre-orders but we still had to order stuff on top of that once we got more orders in um delivery times came down to about two and a half weeks for that which wasn't too bad but again people want stuff now um and that's what we're offering on july 24th so we've all this stock here um we've yeah pretty much applied everything that we've learned from the first um two drops um so we know what will go better than than others um and we're kind of able to make educated guesses on um on what we need so yeah next day deliveries and um yeah just much quicker turnaround times um is what we'll be doing from from now on which is huh. great it's, it's it's necessary as peter was saying we need to emulate what the what the big businesses are doing right um and delivery times is definitely something that they are doing right mm. so yeah for sure that's something um, sort of yeah we got like we got a shock well we can overlay the footage like when we saw what came in and we were like right this is real now we have to people have given us this so we need to get this product out like because it was a lot of responsibility to be honest you were sort of looking at it you're like jesus great that we got it but i mean there's a lot there's a lot more to be done with it so i mean over the week after we were sort of getting our ducks in a row trying to sort out the different processes that we we're going to do how we're we going to organize everything i mean then people trying to change sizes and stuff we were just trying to get everything set up and um, but we saw the demand that was there and we we thought when we're just starting out we need to get as much of our products out there as we can to try and sort of penetrate the market so we put up the second pre-order because the demand was really there we couldn't have left it we, we we could have been lazy with it and said look we'll just focus on what we're doing now and try and get all this stuff out but it was always in the back of our minds that we're just losing sales and losing sales because we don't have any products on our site mm. so you're we like look it's going to take a lot of work it's going to be a lot more on us but it's something we had to do we had to get that second pre-order up or we would have just lost so much um traction so that was essential I mean and in fairness I was sceptical myself like thing say Richard would always look at something and say well why can't we do it see even with different with the website it would have been easy to get someone to do our website or with like the bigger brands put in the the packaging they have the the nice seed we have seed paper in our packages and in our products and stuff like that so it's just the little things that um, people notice like confirmation emails and stuff you need to run a 100% professional um, we didn't want to start off doing sales through Instagram and DMs and passing over cash and we wanted to just sort of set up how we were going to go about it from, from the beginning and try and do everything as best we can obviously there's improvements to be made there's some things we can't do but you have to look at look at things that challenges you're facing and say what do the other brands do and why why can't we do it what what skills do they use in in doing this that we can't learn so that's sort of the attitude you have to have 100 yeah. percent. and then obviously your first ever order from the uk uh what sort of places other than obviously ireland the uk that you kind of got orders from or has it been exclusively kind of ireland the uk yeah i know so far it's been exclusively ireland um ireland the north and mainland uk so um definitely is uh, an option for us to go worldwide but i'm not sure we're quite not sure we're quite it's not like it would take a lot um to do that but i mean when we do um go worldwide we want it to be kind of a bit of a bigger deal it's a whole new market mm. um if we were to do that so i suppose we kind of want to get ireland and the uk down first and uh, fully understand what's going on close to home before we start getting ahead of ourselves i mean i'm even at that, if we did open up worldwide, I'm not sure many people know about us. I, re I really don't think they do. Um, we'll have to get Charlie D'Amelio on and like, <laughs> yeah, get <laughs> um, a renegade in there. She follows Keen Gannon, so I've made you hook up there, yeah. Because really? uh, they, they ended up, for some reason, they ended up following each other when she was like really, really small TikToker, and now she still follows them on Instagram. So <laughs> there's your hook up there. <laughs> Ideal, <laughs> Ideal yeah. Jeez, <laughs> nah, geez, for sure. Um, but yeah. Um, 
there's no point just getting greedy with uh, going worldwide yet. Mm. Um, Ireland and UK is still a big enough market. Um, we absolutely have not tackled the whole lot of it yet. Um, and that's something we just need to get our, you know, be patient, um, get the, the things close to home right, um, and then look at, look at the bigger picture. 100%. And then obviously I know you were in Dublin lately. Um, did you end up spotting anyone wearing pure, or have you have you had an experience yet where you've run into someone wearing pure clothing yet? Um, oh, well, one of my friends lives in Dublin. She works in a cafe, and she said someone walked in, which was sort of funny. Like, but um, I mean, we're 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 in here most. Like, I hear back people seeing people and stuff, but I I've never actually. I've never seen someone on the street wearing it oh, yet, yes. so okay. it's, it's disappointing to be honest. But uh, <laughs> hopefully it'll happen. Get someday. your game up, come on! I know. Yeah, <laughs> it's funny there when we were in Dublin yeah. last week. Um, yeah, we hopped on the train and the train was dead quiet the whole journey up until we got to, I don't know, it was somewhere after Atlone. I think it could have been Nice or something. Um, four girls come on beside us and so we hear a little bit of whispering and we didn't really pay much attention and um, a phone went to the ear. With, without a phone call going on and you know a, a, the volume button was pressed like this and I was sitting on this side so like I don't know I came across like a picture was being taken and but we weren't sure we weren't sure and next thing one of our videos plays out loud we were like shit okay potentially um, and then we arrived in Houston and as we stand up um, we used the guys from TikTok we were like Jesus Christ like, it was our first time kind of being out of the county and I know it's one that's, that's literally the only bit of um yeah, I still haven't seen a garment out there, but we yeah. have had a small bit of recognition. Like, it's it's interesting. It's definitely different, but it's cool. Yeah, like it is different. Obviously, I think you're in a really unique scenario where you've kind of gone and gained all your traction during COVID, so you weren't really out and about. Like, and obviously, like I said, even in, even if when things got re- restrictions got lifted or partially lifted, mm. you can't even. You're not even leaving here anyway. You're working here all yeah. the time anyway. So yeah. you're not even leaving here. So it's it's funny that you. <laughs> Fake phone call, nice. <laughs> <laughs> you see, the thing is, like, I was on Nationwide when I was in sixth class, so, like, ever since then, I've sort of been people have. Been <laughs> oh, okay, yeah, 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 of course, yeah, you've been famous happened. ever since. Exactly, Just yeah. riding the wave. <laughs> Paparazzi everywhere, like, it's not, it's not hard life. Yeah, no, even trying to get in here, security on the door, like, yeah. like it's mad. It's tight you know, enough, yeah, they're good guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah no, very sound. Yeah. It's scary to start, but they have my name anyway. But, um, <laughs> yeah, no, it's, like, it's, it's funny, because, obviously, like, it's so easy to say... 600,000 or 100,000 but actually when it relays into actual humans because it's, it's yeah. hard to even link those two together in your own head yeah. even irregardless of what you're doing but it's mad when you actually start seeing it in person and obviously I'd imagine more and more it's going to get <laughs> more and more and more crazy as people start wearing it so then obviously we talked about drop one and drop two and then you're looking towards drop three at the moment on July 24th yeah. so obviously you have more stock now which people can see behind you Um how are you lining up towards this? How are you feeling going into it? What can people expect from it? Um, next day delivery is a big thing. Yeah, that's so huge. We're, we're really happy with that because um, delivery time, we were always sort of something we were just like, oh, I wish we could just get it out to you next day, but we just have to, we can't afford to buy in stock. So now we've, we've sort of reinvested everything we ever, ever have ever made into just holding as many garments as we can. So if an order does come in, um, it's just packed, shipped, and next working day delivery. So we're happy with that. Um, there's a few, like the t-shirts are new design. We had we had previously embroidered them, but they're now screen printed with like a, a water based ink. Um, so and the f- the place they're done has um sort of reuses all their waste and um, products. So there's no there's very little wastage there. So um, we're happy with the process there. So it's a lot cleaner. It's a lot more comfortable on your chest. So. Mm. There, that's that's a new product that we're dropping, um, and I think that's the only yeah that's the only new product that we. I mean, it's still very very early on for us. Um, of course, I say it's our it's our third drop, but it's kind of the the start of us kind of operating officially, mm-hmm. um, which is is interesting. But you know, we're still full of full of energy, so mm. we're yeah we're it'll be it'll be a lot of pressure. Um, we're launching on the Friday night, um, so a lot of deliveries will be collected from us on the Monday in people's hands on the Tuesday um, so I mean yeah who knows like when we as I said when we launched the very first time we had 15,000 on TikTok we now have almost 45,000 so who knows how that will scale I don't know um, but we have a few viral TikToks lined up now is that <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, just teasing them yeah, 100%. <laughs> yeah I mean hopefully it will be busy I'm sure we'll be busy um, but yeah we'll see Um 
looking forward to it definitely it's, yeah. it's been it's been a long time coming we were patient now for the last two three weeks we we've been sold out um and we've ordered in the stock and got everything prepared as best we can but yeah we're just as patient as possible to make sure that everything is 100 percent ready um we were actually going to launch yesterday so that was what the 17th 17th it was yeah. last friday yes. yeah yeah um but no we said we'd just push it out one more week make sure all our ducks are in a row yeah um ready to go and um actually fulfill uh the promises that we make so yeah doesn't hard uh, it and have you enjoyed the process because obviously like I, I know overall look you know i know probably in the heat of it it's very tough at times but have you like have you ever gone jeez maybe maybe made the wrong decision because obviously you're both studying in college as well like you you, you probably had college work and stuff to be kind of battling as well which yeah. doesn't make things any easier how has the process been has like obviously there's been ups and downs but well like there's no better learning than doing something yeah but, you know you're never going to get we're never going to get the opportunity again like we came home with covid from college and i mean i don't have rent to pay like i'm living at home and um, so i just sort of had that it afforded me that time both of us that time to sort of really go at something and i mean um with my degree that i'm doing marketing like this is the best this is as good as the degree itself in walking into somewhere and saying like i this is the business that i set up when i was um over over covid like so um it's been so beneficial like the things that we've learned about setting up uh, we basically set up a whole um business mm -hmm. from from scratch um in a couple of weeks um so I'm really really it really was such a learning experience the skills that we picked up are just priceless going forward like so I'm happy enough that if I go into somewhere now with the sort of knowledge that I've picked up and the experience that I've gained uh, if if this was to go under but hopefully fingers crossed which would that it doesn't but um that I'd have that sort of bank there that I've done I've done this now um this is what I've learned from it um, so I'm, yeah it's been it's been amazing mm. yeah I mean don't really have much to add to that it's it's fairly bang on everything it's been kind of a continuation of the skills that we've already kind of developed um we've worked together for the last since 2016 we've been working together and they always say you shouldn't go into business with with your friend but i mean it's um i don't know we look at every situation whenever there is a problem um look at it with logic and you know if if there is an issue it's it's fairly easily resolved um by applying what's what's best i mean we can be stubborn at times but for the most part um we try to do the right thing um or the right business decision and yeah it's it's worked well for us since 2016 up to now so that's through three or four different projects and yeah um hopefully hopefully as peter said things won't go under and things will continue to go well i mean my first we'll see. My first i had a surfboard rental that i wrote as a role in black marker uh, surfboards for hire yeah. when i was like 14 and that it went from that to sort of doing project working in with richard it's probably more technically gifted than i am like so uh, <laughs> I always had, yeah you know, i always had like i always wanted to do business myself but um no it sort of worked well we sort of started working well together and um, but i mean yeah it's funny just i probably over you can overlay the picture that i put up i put on facebook um got all my friends to share i think i rented two surfboards made about 20 20 euro <laughs> it's a great summer's work like but um to see the sort of progression from there to, to now uh, it's sort of funny um but yeah, business is always something that I've I've always wanted to get into, um, and even with the family business, like the the shop that I was talking about, Dad's shop, um, yeah, it sort of, it was an area that I thought that we could sort of build a niche, and go after it, yeah. And could you see yourself working for someone? Because like, if you're if you all have that entrepreneurial streak that you've been talking about, could you see yourself working for someone? Because I know personally, after being a business for myself for a few years, I can't see myself working for someone now, if I'm being yeah. honest. The whole ethics of the whole fast fashion industry is really some it's it's appalling really. Like you have workers in in Asia getting maybe three three do three dollars a day, the equivalent of a mm. um stuff like that. Um but it's out of sight, out of mind. People don't seem to pay any heed of it when they're getting a jumper for a tenner online, they just say, Oh, great deal, like I'll I'll go for it. But I mean, if so, if you're getting a jumper for ten euro, how is how is a worker getting paid minimum wage to make that for for an hour like it's not it's not going it's not happening mm. so and even the wastage that comes out of it uh, you're wasting resources to produce clothes that like people may wear for the quality so poor that they may wear them for 
more than two times thrown out like where that 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 doesn't evaporate into thin air like it has to go somewhere so it's certainly an air it's something we feel strongly about like it is um so it's not just um us trying to make money off it we we want to work on we'll always continue to try and promote um sustainable fashion and we started and it started working on different cleanups around uh, locally so we do like beach cleanups and stuff like that um, we're so, here this morning like literally, exactly, <laughs> literally yeah. this morning that's why we're late but yeah about building it like I love the entrepreneurial lifestyle that you're just sort of especially with this that you're doing something you love doing um, you can't really put a number on that uh, and I wasn't thinking from a monetary perspective I mean the more the, the freedom of like yeah. uh, being able to like work for yourself and obviously you're doing long hours so technically you know working hours but not even the monetary side of it but actual ability to go into work and go well, I can go into work whenever I want, but obviously we're putting in long yeah, hours. You know yeah. what I mean? But like, it's that it's that illusion of freedom. You know, yeah, it's yeah. like well, the discipline equals freedom, as Jocko Willing's saying. You know, yeah. so um, but definitely, like you said, it, your passion towards yeah. the actual the, the the sustainable clothing brand, the ethics and everything yeah. is the passion behind it and the reason yeah. you put in all these hours. Yeah. obviously, yeah. not just the monetary side of it that could yeah. down the line if you build it correctly, yeah. work out for yourselves. Yeah, um, and then looking more towards the future now so obviously I know it's tough because like literally we're talking like we're talking a very small span of time for anyone watching this like this is like a very short span of time where you've gone from an idea a a first TikTok a kind of a starting the concept to actually selling clothes having stock like it's it's like that you know what I mean and where would you like to see let's say in five years time where would you like to see yourselves in because obviously you're doing aeronautical engineering so technically the path you chose you know a year or two years ago is different to this but would you see yourselves long term doing this or would you still like to go down that path or obviously you're going marketing so would you see yourself doing this or where would you see yourself in five years time I mean I'm, I'm passionate about what we're doing right now um, as Peter was saying I share kind of um, most um, values of love of uh, entrepreneurship and, and business and stuff it's something I really really enjoy but yeah Formula One and space is something I also am passionate about so um, I, yeah I just finished my first year um, in UL doing aeronautical engineering um, I 100% am finishing my degree in that so that's really important to me that I do have an option of going into the likes of motorsport or that down the line but um, oh yeah he actually asked me to drop in he, <laughs> he's in the Williams Engineering Academy just, just. <laughs> no, um, yeah well yeah I, I really enjoy this so I, I definitely do want to keep this on personally um, yeah but engineering and that side of things is also um something that's it's definitely strong in my mind I and mean, we're weighing up the options at the minute but yeah we'll see yeah. um yeah, yeah i think like post covid it's certainly an area so the sort of traceability and sustainability have become more bigger priorities mm. so i mean i can't see the niche that's there going down but it's and like we sort of have the attitude it's there and we just have to go and get it like there's no mm. there's no in between like if we want to make it work we we can make it work if we just work hard enough um like that's there's a big time commitment there but it's certainly lucrative if we can go after it of course um going into the future then we'd actually the big the big goal i would have we have a slight impact on things like to be able to sort of impact on the fast fashion industry with some sort of i mean we're small now we're, it's it's hard to say. we couldn't go claiming that we're making a difference quite yet. We are making a small difference. A small difference. We are making a difference. Yeah, uh, yeah. Regardless of size, really. Yeah. So just building that up and making as big an impact as we can is definitely a priority. Like, um, I mean, I suppose pricing and stuff people will say to us, but like at the minute, the cost of production for sustainable clothing is is so much higher than your your fast fashion brands. Mm. So we'd love to be at a scale where we can we can charge a lot less for what we're doing but at the moment it's not viable even in medium term it won't be but we'd love to get big enough to that we can sort of make it mainstreamed and make it make it a, a really viable option that you don't have to to get a cheap cheap jumper you don't have to go to your fast fashion brands that you can you know we want to be have that be it be that option but um yeah i suppose moving into the future we want to sort of impact as much as we can and we have a few different projects that we're thinking of that we can sort of try and make a more um, practical difference that that's visible so that's yeah, that's where we're going to go with it. so then in hindsight looking back now because obviously you've had a very steep run but obviously everything leading up to the launch of this with regards to the marketing agency and everything else 
has helped you get to where you are now. What now, looking back, really stands out as something that helped you give you skill sets to help you out for this business and your previous businesses? Um, you know, I, I put it all down to F1 in schools. Um, it's a competition myself, Peter, and two others um, from our old school did from RNTY. Um, it's where you like make, design, and race a miniature Formula One car. Um, but besides the engineering side of building a car, you have to really operate as a Formula One team. So there's sponsorship there. You need to get in. There's a, so much marketing that you have to do. Um, and you have to be able to justify every decision you make along the way in engineering portfolios, enterprise portfolios. And everything has to be produced uh, to look nice. Uh, everything has to be, be done professionally. Um, so yeah, that was definitely a great opportunity that taught us a lot of things. Um, and thankfully, we were, we were lucky enough to represent Ireland in Malaysia in 2017 at the world finals um we finished up eight there and yeah with the whole journey um over the year we we picked up countless things it's i wouldn't like to think i, I generally don't think we would have been able to start our digital marketing business and if we hadn't done that chances are we wouldn't have been able to do pure clothing so um yeah, yeah. everything kind of filters back to, to it everyone. really does like because i mean you post we had to to get to the world finals we had to raise 50,000 euro wow. in sponsorship right so if you put that in front of four 16 year olds at the time I mean it's a daunting task and that sort of way you pick that pick up that problem solving where like um, we're in it now it has to be done so how are we going to do it you can't look at it be like oh it's, it's too big a figure we'll just we'll sit this one out so it can't happen of course so I mean we thought up all sorts of ideas to try and sort of get ourselves our name out there and try and um, raise the money. So we did like, we even did we did a world record. So we broke the record for the largest human car image. So we got two thousand people. I mean, the population of town is ten thousand. Like, so basically, got a fifth of the community to come up and just stand in the shape of a car, wow. um, just to raise a bit of um, profile, do a bit of mar to market it, um, because all the marketing side of things was worth marks in the actual competition itself, um, and it offered it that world record in itself offered huge return on investment for sponsors so yeah um it's yeah kind of creative different creative ways to offer you know give sponsors a re give sponsors a reason to sponsor us um it's really important like f yeah four 16 year olds coming to um a business in town looking for money i mean i, I think a lot of people would <laughs> fairly quickly turn away from that um unless there's a a good reason to to jump jump on in mm. But you just yeah you just pick up so many like skills along the way of actually doing Facebook marketing. I mean it's it's simple. You sort of grow up around it, so you think it's simple. But it's not until you get into it that you start learning things. We made a lot of mistakes. Like we made most of our mistakes there. Like we sort of had high expectations going out there, and um, we did really well. But our, maybe our expectations were a bit too high or whatever. But um, we made a lot of mistakes going out, and I mean they're vital now like we really stuck to us yeah different things like we had a shipping problem that now sort of motivates us into saying um, delivery wise we need to get everything out and I mean we hit, hit a hit, hiccup in our first launch our first pre-order where um, a few mediums hoodie, hoodies sort of got got sort of sticky we did, we did they didn't come through from the supplier basically mm -hmm. but um, we were able to sort of come up with a solution because we had been sort of used to things going wrong we knew something was going to go wrong like and we, thank god it wasn't too major but obviously you're gonna you're gonna hit a hiccup at some stage when you're just starting out but i suppose through the f1 in schools <laughs> yeah dead that, yeah those are two are grand yeah yeah we're, we're on the last two because right. we'll finish up to it okay, right. perfect yeah so through the f1 in schools competition that's where um a lot of that problem solving came from and mm. where you were sort of thinking we can actually do this. We can actually sort this out. We can conquer this obstacle. Like it, there's no reason why we can't. You know, so. hundred percent. And I one thing I really liked about G and the reason I kind of semi reached out was like I'm big on young people capitalizing young. You know, as in like whether it be in creative, business, sport. I genuinely do think that people use their age as, as an excuse. Or I I'm in technical. I can't do this. I'm in college. I can't yeah. do this. I'll do it afterwards. But the fact that you capitalize on that, I. That's the reason I love those sort of stories, and I think it's more stories that should be shared. You know what I mean? Um, but you've done it phenomenal so far. Um, is there anything like you kind of like to plug before you finish? 
probably shoot down that camera there through the wide angle. Um, Richard wants to plug his Instagram. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, I know. I mean, yeah. The the only real thing that we have is we're launching on Friday, so that's July twenty fourth. Um, we offer next day delivery and yeah. Yeah. We're mail for Sam. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no, uh, I'll have all your Instagram and uh, personal, uh, personal and professional on uh, all linked below. Thank you very much for everyone for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. And uh, yeah, sure, we'll see you next week. Good night, we live.